And today we gather in our 19th year of this event to honor those who rest here by caring for the trees and the turf. Turf, which covers these 682 acres like an eternal blanket and softens the footfall of grief for those who come to mourn. Trees, over 8,000 here and many over 200 years old, stand as silent sentinels, witnesses to the burials and grieving families while spreading their branches of comfort to all who come and visit. As landscape professionals, we are here to make a difference, to give back, to express the love and thanks in our hearts through the work of our hands. Our profession gives us a unique opportunity to come together and contribute to the comforting beauty of this sacred space. Can you imagine an Arlington National Cemetery without turf, without trees, without the sense of peace that these landscape elements give us? We know that nearly every memorial ever created has been designed and maintained by landscape professionals. When you visit the 9-11 National Memorial in New York City and approach the two waterfalls where the towers once stood, you quickly realize why those waterfalls are named reflecting absence. It's not only the towers that are absent, but the lives of nearly 3,000 who were murdered that day. When you move away from the waterfalls, you are under a canopy over 400 oak trees that were chosen to comfort a nation. The names of those lost are not arranged alphabetically on the bronze paddle panels that surround the waterfalls. Family members were asked by those designing the memorial who they were close to, who they knew or who they worked with. And thus the names were arranged by what they call meaningful adjacencies. I've come to appreciate that term meaningful adjacencies as it relates to life and how important meaningful adjacencies are in all of us in our lives when we look around and become aware of those who are close to us and who we make an impact on. These hallowed grounds can certainly evoke sorrow and sadness. When we look upon the headstones, our eyes often go to the date of birth and the date of death. But yet it's that space between those dates that really holds the story. If we reflect only on how those died, we miss the most important part of our existence and their existence, our life. For isn't it what occurs between those two dates that's the most important part of the story? It's the space between those dates that we all make our lives. It's our story. It's the story of inspiration here at Arlington, courage, leadership, and the story we probably would call the most common story here, stories that we can all share in, stories of everyday small acts of kindness and giving of oneself to others. April 4th, 1968. Senator Robert Kennedy is on the presidential campaign trail in my home state of Indiana. He just finishes a speech at Ball State University and as he boards a plane for Indianapolis, he was privately informed that Martin Luther King had been shot. When his plane arrived on the ground in Indianapolis, he was told by his aides that King was dead and that the police chief of Indianapolis advised him not to go into the black neighborhood in Indianapolis that he was going to uh, give a speech at. They told him they would not be able to protect him. Kennedy went anyway. And as he walked across the asphalt parking lot to the throng of thousands that were cheering him on, he took his speech and he put it inside his pocket. The crowd was cheering, they had signs up, Bobby, welcome to our neighborhood, welcome to Indiana. They did not know that King was dead. In that moment, in a ghetto area of Indianapolis, Robert Kennedy had to tell them of King's death and then gave one of the greatest speeches in history without any notes. But that isn't the end of the story. After the speech, with a city on the verge of riots, Kennedy went to his campaign staff, mostly young, mostly white kids, and told them, you can go home tonight, or you can go into the community and talk to the neighborhood, talk to the folks. They need your help tonight. Only a few went home. And while most major cities across the country burned for days from riots, Indianapolis remained calm. Two months later, Kennedy himself was assassinated. The words from his speech can be found at his memorial not far from here. Small acts of kindness, caring, can make a difference in the world and change the arc of history. Today you will make a difference at Arlington National Cemetery by your work. Your efforts will help make this beautiful landscape provide comfort to the over four million people who come here every year. And you will also be giving honor to those who have given so much to our country. As individuals united by the National Association of Landscape Professionals, we make the world just a little bit better by creating and maintaining spaces where we work, live, and play every day. Never, never underestimate the positive impact that you all have, that we have, in making the world a little better place.